Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper Moment number 152. The mission of our Digging Deeper Moments is to take God's Word to God's world, and we are so glad that you've joined us. And we hope that before watching this lesson, you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, which will help us spread messages like this to others. Last week, we finished our series on the assumptions we bring with us in our study of origins. In that series, we saw how we all bring assumptions with us into our study of this most fascinating and debated topic. Tonight, now that we've wiped our feet on the mat, we will begin to look at what the Bible actually has to say about the creation of the universe. We begin with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, this translation is taken from the New King James Version, and it uses ten words to translate what the Hebrew Bible says in just seven. In this study, we're going to look at all seven words in depth. The Hebrew reads as follows, Bereshit bara Elohim eight hashamayim eight haaretz. The first word is the Hebrew word Bereshit. It's actually a composite of the prefix preposition be and the noun reshit. Now, a preposition is a word or a group of words used before a noun, a pronoun, or a noun phrase to show direction, time, place, location, spatial relationships, or to introduce an object. Some examples of prepositions would be words like in, at, on, of, and to, and there's many more. In Hebrew, the preposition be means in, on, at, among, into, and at times even when. The context determines the meaning. Now, the Hebrew word reshit means first, first fruits, best, chief, principal, foremost, and prominent. But 18 of its 51 uses in the Old Testament is translated beginning. So the Bible begins with the noun better sheet, which means beginning or first, and the prefix preposition in or at, or even among, attached to it at the beginning. And so the New King James Version translates it in the beginning. But wouldn't you know that the very first word of the Bible presents us with a controversy? Because there is no the attached to Bereshit. In Hebrew, the definite article is prefixed, the definite article the is prefixed on words like a preposition is, but it's not done so here. So the Bible literally says in beginning, not in the beginning. The New King James Version and other versions add the the to smooth out translation because in English we wouldn't say in beginning, we say in the beginning. Another example of this is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 8, verse 17, which says, Then Solomon went to Ezion Geber, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Ezion Geber, and Eleth on the seacoast in the land of Eden. The words in the land of Edom are literally Ba'eretz, Edom. Notice the first word Ba'eretz starts, starts the same way as the word Bereshit does, with the preposition Be, but it's attached to the word Eretz, which means land or earth. But also notice there is no the, but it is translated with a the nonetheless. And the reason for this is it just smooths out uh, um, being able to re read the text. So I would caution you not to get too worked up about there not being a the in the first sentence or the first word of the Bible as some do. The the itself is really part of a bigger argument that we're going to look at when we begin to look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. For now, understand it, it's not as big a deal for us as we look at the word bearer sheet. It will become an issue that we'll have to address later on, which we'll do in a separate Digging Deeper moment. Don't make a mountain out of a molehill. There are some real mountains to climb when studying Genesis 1-1, but this isn't one of them. Now for centuries, the traditional translation of the verse, this verse has been in the beginning, and there is no reason to abandon it. What's more telling is the fact that the first sentence of the Bible actually begins with a noun. Because the usual order of a Hebrew sentence is verb first, subject, then object. But Genesis 1-1 doesn't start that way. It starts with the noun better sheet. Now, when a Hebrew sentence starts with a noun, one of the reasons it does so is to mark emphasis. And the emphasis is on when the action of the verb, which is create, happened. And what was created? The heavens and the earth. So the placement of bear sheet at the beginning of the first sentence of the Bible tells us that God created the heavens and the earth at the beginning. They were the first, or at the first. That is, they are the first act of creation. The heavens and the earth are the very first thing that God created. And this is important because what it means is that God created the heavens and the earth, what they call ex nihilo, out of nothing, which means He did not use any pre-existing material in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Now this sets the Genesis account of creation apart from the many ancient Near Eastern myths 
which were around in Moses' time because they always begin with pre-existing materials. Some modern translations actually translate Genesis 1-1 as when God began to create heaven and earth. That's the New Jerusalem Bible. Or in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. That's the New American Bible. But it's important to note that this change in translation means that the creation of the heavens and the earth in Genesis 1-1 are no longer the first act of creation. This earth interpretation changes theology because it doesn't support Genesis 1-1 number, Genesis 1 -1 no longer supports the doctrine of creation ex nihilo. So this is one of those mountains that we find in the Genesis account of creation. Now the arguments for this translation are complicated. But it seems to me that these arguments are all negated by four things. In other words, I've spent a lot of time looking at these arguments of what's going on in the Hebrew. And as I look at them, it really boils down to four things that make this translation uh, not very plausible. First, it goes against the traditional way that Genesis 1-1 has been translated for centuries. And it reveals a modernistic bias in its approach to the text. In other words, these translators have mud on their feet. The technical term for this is eisegesis instead of exegesis. Eisegesis is reading into the text and exegesis is reading from the text. And I suspect there's some mud on the feet of these translators as, I, as I've looked at the arguments that they make. Secondly, this translation appears to be motivated by an assumption, the assumption that the universe is old. Now we addressed the, the age of the earth and whether it's young or old and, and those kind of assumptions in our digging deep, last Digging Deeper series, specifically uh, we cover the age of the earth in Digging Deeper 147. You may want to go there. But once again, we're talking about it, we were talking about in that series, Mud on Our Feet. And so these translators are coming in with the assumption that the universe is old and they're trying to work the text to allow for that. And that's always a red flag when we begin to study the Bible. And it's a red flag when we study science as well. Thirdly, its grammatical argument is weak. For a full discussion on this, see AnswersResearchJournal.org, but I'll warn you, reading this article is like swimming through peanut butter. It's a very deep, very, very good summary of the arguments, but it is a difficult read. It could take some time, a lot of things in there. So if you really want to look at the grammatical argument, which they contend is weak, uh, you, you expect to spend an hour or so. The fourth reason we should translate Genesis 1 and 1 according to the traditional interpretation which is in the beginning and not as when God began to create is the most important and that is because the Bible itself contradicts this translation. Exodus chapter 20 verses 11, 8 through 11 clearly state that the first act of creation was the creation of the heavens and the earth when it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is the, the fourth commandment. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. Now, what Moses is doing here is he's giving reason for and substantiating the reason why Israel was to take a Sabbath, and that's because the Lord created everything in six days and then he rested. And then he says in verse 11, For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. Now notice in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, that it includes the creation of the heavens and the earth, as stated in Genesis 1.1. And it also goes on to say that everything that was created in the next part of Genesis chapter 1, verses 2 through 31, it also says that the rest of that was created in those six days. And so it doesn't leave any room for the heavens and the earth to not to be in, involved in the creation act of Genesis chapter 1. And so the first word of the Bible, better sheet, tells us, in the beginning... And then it goes on to tell us what God did in the beginning. He created the heavens and the earth. If this lesson has helped you, please like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or check out our Sunday morning live podcast on either Apple or Spotify. And if you'd like to partner with us as we take God's Word to God's world, you can do so by going to our website and clicking the How to Give tab. I hope to see you next week.